Hey guys, welcome to another Rock the JVM video. I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to rant about variables, but probably not in the style that you expect. So here I am in my development environment, and in this video, I'm going to write less code because this talk is a little bit more philosophical. So here's my gripe. For a long time in my Scala classes and trainings, I used to start the training obviously with values and variables. So this is what everyone starts with when learning Scala. We write something like val a value, and we say, for example, that the value has the value of two, for example, where's my cursor. Okay, so I say a value equals two and I show a compiler error by trying to reassign the value, saying a value equals three. And this is a compiler error called reassignment to val. And uh, we learn a Scala by thinking of a value as a constant. For example, in Java, we would write const int a value equals two or something like that. So we can consider values as constants. I'm actually going to comment this out because this is a compiler error. Cool, so we learn about values as some kind of constants and then the very next step is that we define a variable. A variable equals three. And then we show that variables are different from values in that they can be reassigned. So I can see a variable equals 47 or something like that. And this is okay. So a variable can be reassigned as opposed to a value. So this is piece of cake. This is what I used to start with as well in my trainings and in my learning path with Scala. However, the very next thing I say in my trainings is that variables are discouraged. Do not use variables. And at this point, people are confused. Why are we not supposed to use variables? And uh, as soon as I notice the confusion in the room, I immediately follow with a trust me, just to ease the tension in the room. So trust me, don't use variables, you will learn why later. So the confusion is natural because people come from an imperative programming background like Java or Python, where you can't do squat without variables. So from an instructor's point of view, introducing Scala by relying on some concepts that people are familiar with, like values and variables, seems natural and intuitive. But I recently started to believe that this is the wrong approach. Here's why. So once someone gets started with Scala by learning mutable variables like this, they instantly validate every other concept that might have learned or used in other languages or thinking styles. So let's assume we want to do something 10 times. How do you do something 10 times in another programming language? Well, you define a variable. Let's call this i equals zero. And while i is less than 10, you would do something. For example, print line. Hey ma, I'm looping. And then I would increment the variable. So i plus equals one. In other words, people start thinking where I should say continue thinking procedurally. So this is procedural thinking from procedural programming or imperative programming. Now, this is blocking the normal flow of learning functional programming in Scala because we want to think in terms of expressions, not instructions, such as while loops and variables. So the right way to do something 10 times would be something like this. Iterate through a collection, or should I say, applicate a function on a collection, like zero until 10, and then I would call for each. And for each i, I would print line, hey ma, I'm doing it the right way. So this is how we would quote unquote iterate by using expressions and functional operators like for each map, flat map, and so on and so forth. So the looping version above this one would not pass code review in any strong Scala team. So this is one problem. Another problem which wreaks more havoc in production is mutation. So mutation is also a big problem because people are used to thinking in the following way. They would define a collection, for example, my list, as list, let's call this one, two, three. And then they would use the list in some processing in their functions or uh, whatever they're doing with this collection. And then if they want to modify this list, they use the fact that Scala collections are immutable, but they use a variable for that. And so they reassign the list, like my list equals my list colon plus four, that is they append four to the end of the list, which returns a new list indeed. But they reassign this new list to the same variable and then they pass it around to some other external service. So they would pro probably, for example, if I defined, 
let's call this invoke external service, which takes a list as a list of int, or just print line or something like that, give it a dummy implementation. And then when they pass it around, when they pass this new list around, which is the same variable, they would say invoke external service with the same my list, which is pretty, pretty dumb. Or, excuse me, not necessarily dumb, but extremely, extremely hard to debug, especially if you're invoking this external service multiple times. So if, while using the list, you're invoking your external service with my list, notice you have two identical calls with invoke external service my list and invoke external service my list. And in this particular code, the difference between these two calls is just a couple of lines. But what if you have 2,000 lines? that would be extremely hard to debug and read. And so we want to do it the right way. For example, I would create a starting list as list123, and then I would use it, for example, invoke external service with starting list, okay? And then I would create another list. So I would say val another list as starting list column plus four, and then I would pass that around. For example, invoke external service with another list. So notice that in this case, these two lines are different, and they are the more different, the more complex your external service is, the more complex your API is, and the more different your arguments are. Now, even if Scala learners understand immutable data structures, like the fact that the column plus operator returns a new list all the time, reusing variables makes code very hard to read and reason about, and especially in multi-threaded or distributed applications. In this case, we can very quickly lose track of who modified which variable, or which piece of code reassigned our shared variables here. Now, if we start learning Scala with variables, we continue thinking this way, and uh, in this way we can make concurrent and distributed code worse in Scala than in Java. So keep it clean and do it right. That's not to say that variables are bad all the time. I'll probably talk about when variables are useful in another video, but if we want to discourage people from using variables, why are variables the first thing they learn? So I've stopped teaching people about variables and my recent trainings at Adobe and the Scala at Lightspeed mini course, which is also available, embody this belief. So I start with values and just ignore variables altogether. I stop talking about them. So um, I teach people how to use functions and then how to build more complex things. Inevitably, some trainees and students sometimes ask me, hey, Daniel, isn't there some variable or something at which I tell a lie and I say, nope, there is no variable, you'll have to use what you have for the assignment that I've given you. And they always find a way. And after the training or the class, they tell me that they understand Scala as a different way of thinking more than just another programming language, which is my main goal at the very end. And only then do I tell them that there is such a thing as a variable in Scala, so I do this at the very end, but by that time, nobody even cares. So I will humbly share this small rule of thumb. If you're learning Scala, pretend you've never even heard of variables. There are no such things. So make do without variables. And if you happen to be an instructor or if you're teaching Scala, if you don't want your students to use variables and loops, don't teach them. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel, and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form, and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching.